All right, everybody, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make what's called a flow chart using a website called Lucid Chart. So first thing we're going to go to is go to Lucid Chart. You just Google it, it'll come up. And Lucid Chart is a really, really good tool for making any kind of diagrams, really good for science diagrams, electrical diagrams, anything like that. But we're going to make a flow chart today. So I'm going to log in, and I'm going to use my Google account to get in. Takes a second here. And I've used this before, so I probably have a bunch of documents already, but I'll, I'll make a new one and show you. And it just takes a second here to load. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new document, and it's going to be a Lucid Chart document. And again, LucyChart is a tool used for making diagrams and things like that. It's got a bunch of shapes, and it's really, really useful. Now, by default, we can see things like the flowchart symbols. Uh, there's way, way, way more shapes available. If you go under here, I believe, you could add all kinds of things in. If you want to do floor plans, you can. UML, that's a more sophisticated uh, kind of modeling language you use in computer science. Uh, you can do network diagrams, you can do all kinds of things, like network infrastructure. I once had to design a classroom, and you could like bring out desks and, and lay things out. There's all kinds of cool things in here. So take a look, There's, it's like it's unbelievable the amount of different diagrams you can make with Lucidchart. So I'm going to show you uh, the flowchart right now, just a nice simple one. And there's a lot of symbols. I'm not going to go through every single one. I'm going to go through the most popular ones. These are the ones that I, I think most people should know. So this one here is the Terminator. This one here, you, I use this one for a start and an end. So you drag that out. You can double click the type inside of it. And I'll make a start. And then uh, we're going to use that for the end as well. The square one uh, right here, this one, it just says process. For this one, again, the way that I interpret the symbol is use it like, like a step like a computational step, for example, okay? And then uh, the diamond is for decisions. This is for like, uh, in computers, it'd be like an if statement or anything that's a true or false decision. And the other one I use often is this one right here. This one, it says IO. This is for input and output. So let's let's make a real simple example here. Uh, I'll just do a flow chart. Let's say the program is going to be, uh, if I, the user is going to enter an age, and if I put in 16 or higher, it's going to say, yeah, you can have your driver's license. And if it's not, it's going to say you're too young. Something simple like that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll have a step here that says uh, maybe int age. So that creates the age variable. And what I'm going to do is connect these. You can use these little dots here to connect with arrows and watch the arrowheads. That's very important. So we create the age. And then maybe the first thing I'm going to do now is... Uh, ask the user for their age. So let's connect that. And then once I've got the age, I can make a decision based off of that. So I can say, is age greater than or equal to 16? And if it is, let's print out something over here. We can display uh, print old enough to drive and let's connect these before I forget so we're gonna go down there and then from here to here and notice the first one I pulled out uh, out of the diamond actually has the the word yes on it okay diamonds are, are almost always gonna be yes or no decisions or true or false you can think of it that way too so try and structure your questions inside here in yes no type questions so if the user said that they're over 16. We're going to print out old enough to drive. Otherwise, I'm going to print too young to drive. And let's connect that. I'm going to make nice lines here. And the nice thing with Lucipress is these all click together. So it's going to it's going to line it up perfectly. And those arrows will follow you. And it gives you little guidelines. So if you move this, you can see it, it kind of clicks in right here. It's, it's, it's doing that to try and make things nice and neat and organized for you, right? So we've got two decisions here, yes and no, right? It prints these out. 
And then uh, you need to basically have an end right now. So that's going to be the end of my little mini program. So I'll just put a little end right here. Maybe I'll put it right with this one. I'll just write end. And then we'll connect these. You don't want to have dead ends. They all have to point to the end in the end. Okay, so there is my little mini flowchart. And so it starts off with the start. It defined a variable called age. It asked the user for their age. Made a decision, is the age greater than 16? If yes, print old enough to drive. If no, print too young to drive. And then it ended the program. So this is a this is sort of a computer science kind of a, a plan of a program, but you can use this for many, many things. You can make flowcharts for recipes, uh, for like cooking and stuff, for art, for whatever you want. Anything that has a structure and a plan in place, uh, you can do, you could do the steps for building a house, for example, with a flowchart. So it's not just for computer science; it's for many, many things as well. It's a project management tool. Now, again, there's way, way, way more um, symbols that are used, and depending on what textbook you're using and what style you're using, they might use different things. Um, these are the ones that I typically use. I usually use the rounded rectangle. That's for the the start and the end. The square one or the square rectangle is for a computational step, so something that occurs. So, for example, even if I um, if I like calculated like an average or something like that, like that calculation, that's a step. That would be a rectangle. The parallelogram is for any kind of input or output, and the diamond is for decisions. So those are the main ones that I use. Obviously, there's far more. And again, like I said, depending what textbook you might be looking at or what course you're in, they might have different symbols and, and different uses. But all of them are there, and uh, like I said, connect them all with arrows, and uh, pretty straightforward. And you can do anything you want with it. You can print it out. You can download it as a PDF. You can do all kinds of neat things with this. So uh, LucidCharts are a pretty useful tool, and uh, hopefully you find it useful and handy in the future.